Hello everyone. About two weeks ago, we created an app called uh, MyNote. The function of MyNote is to help the user to record um, notes or memos on their mobile devices. For instance, I can type in some notes and then the notes will show up in the list in the app. But have you found a very interesting thing? If you restart the app, all the notes are gone. Once we restart my notes, we will find an empty list. How can we permanently record the data on the user mobile devices? We need to use the database to manage and store the data. Today we will create a new app called MyNote Plus. This new app will not only be able to permanently store the data on the user's mobile device, but also has several new functions. For instance, update data or delete data. The new app should look like this. It has a better user interface design and also the user can type in some information to create a memo list. This time, if we restart the app, let's see what will happen. The information is still in the list. How does this magic happen? In Android, we use something called a SQLite database to create a database in the user's mobile phone or template computer. And then we store the data or information into the database. Therefore, no matter how many times the user quit or restart the app, the data are always there always in the user's phone or template computer. In this lecture, I will teach you how to manage the SQLite database in an Android system so that you can process the user's data or information on their mobile devices. This chapter is highly dependent on the previous chapters. So please have a good review for the basic database management concepts such as the ER database design, the functions of primary key and foreign key, how to write the CQ script, and so on and so forth. Those knowledge will provide a solid foundation for you to develop the SQLite database in an Android system. I have to say this chapter is not an easy chapter, so please pay attention to the lecture and then review the slides after this lecture. Please also try out the code I give to you for the MyNote Plus development. Today we will start with the SQLite database introduction first. And then I will introduce several concepts to you, including the Cursor class, Content Value class, SQLite Open Helper class, and lastly we will talk about the Simple Cursor Adapter as we discussed in the last lecture, database management is important to every app or game. No matter what service you provide to the user, finally you will deal with the user's data input into the app or the game. In practice, several database management software can accept and process the CQ language. But in Android development, we use a software called SQLite Database. It is designed by Richard Heap in 2000 when he was working for General Dynamics. The reason we use SQLite Database in the Android development are, first of all, this database takes very small resources from Android operating system. As you can see, a smartphone or a template computer it really doesn't have a lot of memories or hard drive spaces. Therefore, we are unable to implement a large database management software on a smartphone or a template computer. We need a light version of the database management software. That's why we adopt SQLite. Secondly, which is more important, the Android development team already adopted SQLite database into 
the Android operating system, and developed a SQLite database library. You should be very familiar to the word library. As long as we mention a library, you should think about borrowing some codes from the library if possible. In other words, when you develop a database for an Android app, you don't have to develop the database from scratch. You can import some codes about the database management from the SQLite database library. With this being said, we need to further analyze the SQLite database class. The SQLite database class is a class that can help us to create an empty database for every Android app. As long as I mentioned a class, you should think about a class is also a data type in the Android development. Therefore, we can create a variable or an instance under this class and then borrow the codes for this variable or the instance. Remember, the function of the SQLite database class is to create an empty database for the app. If you want to read some data from a database, you use the first format. Here we use this.getReadableDatabase to create an empty database. If you want to write some data into a database, you use this.getWritableDatabase to create an empty database. After this, an empty database is set up in your app. The next question is, how can we create a, a data table in this database? We use a method from the SQLite database class. It's called a ESCQ. In the parentheses, we have one argument. We need to put the CQ script into the parentheses. In Android, we usually write the CQ script as a string type variable, and then give this variable to the ESC CQ method. Let's go back to the previous slide. By using the SQLite database class, we create a variable under this class called DB. And we use this.getWritableDatabase to create a database to which we want to write information. Next, we want to create a string type variable called the create underscore table and then give a value to this string type variable. The value is actually a CQ script. Don't be confused by this two create table. The first one is a string type variable. The second one is a CQ script. You should put everything you learned to create a table in a database between the two double quotes. The reason we want to create a string type variable to carry out the CQ script is because we want to make the programming codes look cleaner. We don't have to write a very long sentence, a very long CQ script between the parentheses after exc CQ method. In this slide, you should apply the knowledge you learned in the last lecture to interpret the meaning of the CQ script. We use create table to create a table in a database. And the table name is node underscore table. Between the parentheses, we define several columns for the table node underscore table. The first column is called a node underscore ID. It is an integer type. We also define this column as a primary key column. We want all the values in this column to increase automatically. The second column is called notes column. The data type for notes column is text type. Text type is another type of virtual type. 
Remember, in Vorchar, we have to specify how many letters or symbols we input into a column. But uh, if you define the column as text type, there is no size limitation. The last column is called visible, and we define it as an integer type. So after we execute the CQ script, that uh, the string type variable bring to the exc CQ method, we should have a, a data table called note underscore table with three columns, including note underscore ID, notes, and visible in the Android app. Now we get the database and the data table. How can we show data on our app? We need to use another class method from the SQLite database class. It's called a raw query. This method has two arguments. The first one, of course, is a select CQ script. The second one is a null, null. The raw query method can be only used when we want to select data from a database in an app. We shouldn't use this method for inserting, updating, or deleting data. Also, when we write the select CQ script in the raw query method, there must be a statement with the primary key as underscore lowercase id in the script. In our case, we use the note underscore id as the primary key column. So when we write the select script, we should write select note underscore id as underscore lowercase id. What if in the future you have an app with the student ID as a primary key. When you use the raw query method, you should write select student ID as underscore lowercase id. After we select the data from a database, in Android system, the result will be returned as a new class called a cursor. A cursor is a class that can help us temporarily hold the selected values from SQLite database. The picture in this slide shows you the function of a cursor. As you can see, a cursor is just like a container. It will hold all the qualified values returned from the database after we run the raw query method. In this cursor, we have two columns. One is called an underscore ID, another one is called a notes. In the underscore ID, we store all the ID numbers for each note. And in the notes column, we hold the extra text messages. You may have a question. When we run the select CQ script in the row query method, didn't we select three columns from the table? Notes underscore ID, underscore ID, and notes. Actually, no. We only selected two columns. They are note underscore id and notes. The function of the keyword as in the CQ language is to switch the note underscore id column name to underscore id. That's why in the cursor, we will not see note underscore id as we can see in the table, but we will see uh, underscore lowercase id as the column name. So we selected uh, two columns from the table and then switch the first column name to underscore id. There are several methods for a cursor class. In practice, we frequently use two of them. The first one is move to first method. After we get the data from a database in an Android system, the qualified data records will be given to a cursor class. If we want to move to the first data record in the cursor, we use move to first method. If we get some new data into the cursor, we want to refresh the cursor by using the requery method. After that, the cursor will be updated. 
so the user will see a new data set in the future. We learned how to create a database, data table, and select data in an Android operating system. Now let's talk about how to update insert data. At this moment, we need a new class called content values in order to insert data into a data table. First, we need to create an instance under the content values class. When we create the instance after the equal sign, we need to use a new content values. After we get the instance, we can start using the method from the content values class. The most important method is put method. The put method has two arguments. The first one will be the column name for the table. The second argument is the new value in that column. Suppose we have two columns in a table. One is called notes, another one is called visible. The notes column can receive text type or string type values. The visible, type, visible column can only receive the integer type value. So we can use put to give a new value to each of the column. After we get the content values instant variable set up, we can execute the insert method of a database. The insert method has three arguments. The first one will be the table name. The second one is a null. And the last one is the content values instance variable we just set up. After we execute the insert method, there will be a new data record in the data table. As you can see, we have so many database management processes in an Android project. We use a new class called a SQLite Open Helper to keep the database management process organized. Once you implement the SQLite Open Helper, you will have two default methods. In other words, you don't have to type in anything. As long as you implement the SQLite Open Helper, you will have a, a onCreate method. You will also have a, a upgrade method. They are given by the Android operating system automatically. Does the method db.exqcq look familiar to you? We just learned the function of exqcq method is to create a data table in a database. What we need to do is to create to write the CQ script between the parentheses after exc CQ method. Now let's talk about the simple cursor adapter class. This is a new class that helps us to connect the data set from a database with a UI control. Two weeks ago, we learned the uh, function of array adapter. It will allocate each element in an array into a cell in a list view. The sample cursor adapter has a similar function. It will allocate each element in a cursor into a cell in a list view. So this is how we connect the backend database with the front-end UI controls in an Android app. The process of creating a simple cursor adapter is a little complicated. When we create a simple cursor adapter variable, we have to specify five arguments. The first one will be a keyword this. The second one will be android.r.layout.simple underscore list underscore item underscore one. This will bring a list of view into your app. The third one will be a cursor. So no matter what kind of data you have or how many columns in the cursor, 
the sample cursor adapter will allocate each one of them into the list view cell. The fourth and fifth arguments are two arrays. The first array is a string type array. You put the column names from the table into the string type array. The second array is an integer type array. You can follow the format in this slide to create the integer array. Basically, this statement is trying to connect a list view with a cursor. That's why we put the list view name and then the cursor name into the simple cursor adapter variable. The last two arguments are used to populate each element from a cursor into every cell in a list view. Do you still remember what is a cursor? Let's go back to the previous slide. As you can see in this picture, a cursor is a container that holds all the data tables returned from the database. A data table could have uh, several columns. For instance, we could have the underscore ID column, the notes column. So that's why when we want to populate every element, every data record from a cursor into each cell in a list view, we have to tell the simple cursor adapter from which column we want to get information in the cursor. That's why we create a string type array as the four columns variable. And then in this array, we put the name of the column from which we get information in the cursor. In this case, we want to populate every note record from the notes column in the cursor into every cell in a list view. That's why in the array, string type array, we put the name of the column notes. Now the simple cursor adapter understand it should bring every note record and then populate it into each cell in the list view. After the simple cursor adapter, we are ready to design the SQLite database in an app. But before that, let's take a look at the table structure of my note app. This picture shows you the column name and metadata for each column in the my note data table. We have three columns, node ID. This is the primary key column. I want all the values in this column are integer. So I can give a unique ID number to each node. And also I want the number to increase automatically. The second column is the notes column. I want to put all the user's input into this column. I want to define the data type for the values in this column to be text type. Remember, you can still input numbers or symbols into a column with the text data type. The only difference is the Android system will treat every number or symbol as a text. The last one is the visible column. Do you remember last time when we mentioned the delete CQ comment? I suggest you not to use delete in practice. But what if a user wants to delete a data record from the list? Here we use a little trick to manage the delete operation. We create the new column visible in the data table. We define the data type for all the values in visible as integer type. However, we only give two possible values to each data record in the visible column, either a 1 or a 0. If we want to show the data record, if we want to show a note on the mobile device, then we give a 1 in the visible column for that data record. If we want to make the notes invisible on the mobile device, then we give a zero as a value for the visible column. In the future, you probably will see a data table similar to this one. We have three columns, and then we have three data records 
three nodes basically. Let's call this data table node underscore table. Because we use once for all three data records in this data table in the visible column, all of them should be visible. If a user want to delete a note, for instance, if we allow the user to long hold a data record in the app, then we can change the value from 1 to 0 in the visible column. And then next time when the app reads the data table, as long as it's a 0, the data record should be invisible. Let me show you an example what I mean. So here I have uh, two data records, two nodes in the app. All of them, all the values in the visible column for them are ones. If I long hold the first data record, then I switch in the backend, I switch the value for the visible column from one to zero. The next time when the app reads the database again, as long as it's a zero, it will not be visible to the user. Physically, we still keep the data record in the database. We just use different standard to select the qualified data record. And then we show the qualified result on the mobile app. So this is the logic why we add a new column called visible in the data table. Now let's organize all the puzzle pieces to create a final app and make our dream come true. This time I want to create a new project called uh, MyNote Plus. And then we want to click uh, Next all the way to Finish. Open the project folder. The first step is to create the user interface. Now we should be very familiar to the UI design. We need a, a text, edit text. Also, we need a list view. Next, we want to give an ID to each UI control. So select the edit text and then change it to my edit text. and then press Enter on your keyboard. Press Yes. Click OK to update all the references to the UI control. Secondly, select the list view and then change the ID to my list view. Press Enter and then click Yes, OK to update all the references. Basically, we have finished the UI design, but uh, what about we change the background of the MyNote Plus to make it look better? In this case, we want to right-click on the RES folder, and then choose New, and then choose Folder. In this folder, we want to give a name as Drawable, D-R-A-W-A-B-L-E, Drawable. You must use the exact name here, Drawable, and then click Finish. And then you can bring in some uh, picture that you like into Drawable folder. So I already have a picture, so I just add it into the Drawable. Choose Copy Files, and then click OK. Now you should be able to see a picture in the Drawable folder. Mine is called a background.png. I want to give this picture to the background. So I select the empty place in the UI design window. And then I want to choose background on the right. In this window, I choose drawable and then click background. And then click OK to confirm. Now you can see a background picture 
show up in the app. Save the project and then we can start programming. Let's go to the SRC folder. Open manActivity.java and in the onCreate method, our first step is to make the connection between the programming control and the UI control. We have uh, two controls in the UI design window, right? There are the edit text and then a list view. So I want to create a variable under the edit text type, private edit text. I want to call it my edit text. I also want to create a list view. I call it my list view. We use the find view by ID method to make the connection between the programming codes and the UI controls. So in the onCreate method, I type in my edit text equals text equals to parentheses edit text find the view by ID. Between the parentheses, I type in r.id.myEditText. Same thing to the list view. I just copy my edit text statement and then change to list view. I get some error here because we didn't import the edit text class and list view uh, class yet. This time we want to use the simple cursor adapter to bring the data from database and then show the data on the app. Therefore, the first step for my note plus is to create a database first. I already typed all the code here. So let me copy and paste into our project and then I will explain to you one by one. Do you still remember how to create a database in Android system? As we just discussed, we use a helper class called a SQLite Open Helper class. A helper class is just like a, a elf. He will do all the preparation work before Santa Claus land on the ground. So let's copy the helper class into our project. Let's ignore the errors on the left first. Let's talk about how the helper class works. We want to develop our own helper class under the SQLite open helper class. We want to add new methods, new uh, variables into our own class. As soon as we bring the SQLite open helper class into our project, we should automatically get two class methods. These are given by the Android system. The first one is called uh, the onCreate class method. It looks familiar to us, right? We said that the function is we want to create an uh, empty database, DB, and then in the uh, by using the exec method, we want to create a data table. Here, I haven't write the CQ script yet. I just uh, temporarily use a string type variable to represent the argument for exec method. Later, I will write the CQ script and then give the value to the string type variable create table. The second method is on upgrade. The function of it is to update the database once we have a new data table. In practice, we usually focus on the onCreate method. Between onCreate and onUpdate, 
we can start writing our own class method in order to update information, select the information, and then show it on the app. As I said, we want to create a data table, but we haven't write the script yet. So let's write the script and then give it to the string type variable create underscore table. Also, we want to write the database name. Maybe we can give a database version, and then we can bring all the basic information to the database. Above public my note data helper, let me copy all the code I write. So here I want to uh, write the script, the CQ script, to create a table. And then we give this script to a string type variable, create underscore table. Before string type, you will find two new keywords, static and final. Do you still remember the definition of a variable? We said a variable is a factor with changing values, right? But what if we fix the value for a variable? Then that variable will become a constant in Android. Constant means a factor with the value doesn't, that doesn't change. If you want to specify the constant in the Android system, you can add a static final after the modifier, access modifier. So this is how we create a constant in Android. Now the create underscore table for the exc CQ method is valid. Because before we use it, we declare it as a constant and then give a value to initialize it. This is the basic rule how we use a variable or a constant in Android, right? Before we use it, we have to declare it and then initialize it. In the future, when Android system executes the onCreate method, first step, it will create an empty database, DB, and then it will execute the CQ script you just wrote for the create underscore table. It will create a table with the name note underscore table. In this table, we have three columns, node ID, and we want all the values in node ID are integers. We want the node ID to be a primary key column. We want all the values automatically increase in the node ID column. And then we have the notes column. We want all the values are text type in the notes column. We also want the uh, visible column. We want to define all the values in visible to be integers. But we only give two possible values, either a 1 or a 0, to the possible column. Besides the CQ script constant, we also create three more constants. There are the database name. We call the database my note database. We also created the data table name, node underscore table. We also create a version number. We call this number one. And the version number should be an integer type. The reason we want to create these three constants is that the SQLite Open Helper class that we borrowed from the library wants to know what is the database name that we expect, what is the table name, what is the version number of this database. That's why we want to create these three constants. Below the constants, we have a collection of calls. My note data helper. This is something called a constructor. The function of a constructor is to connect the customized class with the class that we borrowed from the library. We said that we borrowed the SQLite Open Helper class from the library in order to create a database and data table for us in the app. But we also want to do something more. For instance, 
uh, save the information into the database, delete the information, update the information. So there are some customized function in our uh, database helper class, my note database helper. When we want to use the customized class, but we want to develop the customized class based on the standard class from the library, we always have a constructor. In the constructor, we want to specify where do we want to create the database? What is the database name? What is the version number of the current database? We need to give all the constants we just created to the arguments of the my note data helper constructor. Within the constructor, we have a keyword super and then a parenthesis. Inside of the parentheses, we basically copy all the values we get from the my note data helper constructor. And then the super will bring all the values back to the SQLite open helper class. Then the open helper class in the library will understand what we try to do. It will create a database, my note database, with my note, with node underscore table inside our app. After we specify these three methods from the SQLite open helper class, now we can develop the class methods that we need for this app. In the my note plus app, we want to save the notes, we want to show the notes, and we also want to update the notes information. We want to change the value for the visible column from a 1 to 0 to make a note invisible, right? Let's focus on how to show data and save data in the app. I want to leave the information update class method as an optional requirement. So if you are interested, please take a look after this class. How can we show data in our app? We want to select the qualified results from the database and then return the results to a cursor. And then we use a cursor adapter to allocate every element in the cursor into a cell of a list view. This is how the user can see the list of nodes in our app. So the first step is to find a cursor first. We create a new class method called getNotes. Because we want to return a cursor, so the data type of the returning value should be a cursor before getNotes. In this get notes, we use the existing code from the library. First, we want to create a database because I only want to show data by using this method. There's nothing more than selecting data from the database. That's why I use get readable database to create a database in this method. And then I want to execute the row query method of the database. In the row query method, I wrote the uh, select CQ script. Because I want to show all the records with the value 1 in the visible column, I used the uh, where clause. I want all the qualified nodes to be the nodes with value 1 in the visible column. After we execute the row query method, we will get a cursor. We will give this cursor to a cursor type variable called the results. Next, we want to test if the results is not equal to null. Null in Android means empty or nothing. If the result is not equal to null, that means there are some data records in this cursor. So we want to use move to first method to select the first data records in the cursor. Last step of the get notes method is to return the results, the cursor results, to our app. Now we are ready to populate 
the elements from a cursor into each cell in the list view. The second major class method is called a add node method. The function of add node is to save data. This method will receive an argument from the user's input. It is a string type argument. Basically, this represents a new node. When we receive this new node, the add node method will analyze the value and then save this value into the data table. Do you still remember how to add data into a database? We use content values class. We want to create a variable under the content values class and then start using the put method under this class. So once we get a new node, we will get this value and then give this value as a value for the put method under the content values variable. After that, I execute the insert method of the database to save the new node into the data table. Here for every new node, I will give one to the new node as a value for the column visible. This is because when I get a new node, I want to show it right away. As we just discussed, one in the visible column indicates the node should be visible to user. That's why when we have a new node, we want to give the value one to the visible column. You may wonder, what is the value for the node underscore ID column when we try to add a new node into the database? We just defined the node ID column as an auto increment column. So when we add a new node, the number in the node ID column will be increased one more automatically. We don't have to worry about the value for the node ID column. Looks like uh, we finished the SQLite Open Helper class. Now we can go back to the onCreate method. To create a simple cursor adapter, to populate the elements from a cursor to the list of view in our app. What I'm going to do is to create a instance under the my notes data helper class first. After we get the instance of the my notes data helper class, our app should be able to execute all the CQ scripts we wrote in the my note data helper class. Remember when you create an instance of the MyNode Data Helper class, we use four arguments in the parentheses after MyNode Data Helper class. First one is a keyword this. It shows that we want to create a database in this app. Second one will be the constant we just created in the MyNode Data Helper class. It is the data name database name. Third one is a null. And the last one is the version number of the current database. This is also a constant we created in the my notes data helper class. And then we want to run the method we just created, get notes, to get a cursor from the database. We then give this cursor to a cursor instance or cursor variable. We call it existing nodes. You can also give other valid names for this cursor variable. For instance, a node list, node cursor, and so on and so forth. Next, we want to create a simple cursor adapter to allocate every element in the existing nodes into each cell in the list view. And we can use the format in the slides. Lastly, we set the adapter to the my list view. Now the my list view have all the results from the cursor we get from the database. Last time we talked about how to uh, save data once the user press 
the enter key on their keyboard. So this is the method set on key listener method for the added text control. Last time we used an array list, but in this case we want to permanently save data into the database. We don't want the array list that can only temporarily save data. So we replace the array list with sample cursor adapter. Basically, the double if structure tells us if the user press the enter key or confirm button on their keyboard, then this will be a new note, which would receive the information from my added text, and then change the information into a string type variable. We want to give this string type variable to the method add note in our my note data helper class. The function of add note is to insert this new note into the database. After that, we want to refresh the simple cursor adapter by using the requery method. After we insert a new note into the database, the requery method will go back to the database, select a new collection of data with the new note, and then generate a new cursor with a new note. The requery method will also populate every element in the new cursor into the list view. This is why we can see the new notes after we press the enter key or confirm button on the keyboard. Lastly, we want to clear the previous information in the My Edit text box to finish the whole process of adding a new note in the database. I also wrote a collection of code to show you how to update the value from 1 to 0 in the visible column for each note in order to make a note visible or invisible. This is optional, so if you are interested in how to update information in the app, please take a look at the My List View Set On Item Long Click Listener method. Now we finish the code development. We have a lot of errors. We want to move over to each error and say if they are the import type error. Let's go to the My Note Data Helper class. There are a lot of import type errors in this class. So we move the mouth to each error and see if we can import the class from the library. Looks like we have one under the SQLite Open Helper class. We have one under Context. We have another one under SQLite Database. We have another one under content values class. We have another one for the log. Log is only for me to make some reference, so you don't need to worry about the log comment. We have another one for cursor. We fix all the errors for the SQLite Open Helper class. Next, we want to go back to the onCreate method. DB helper, we have to create a variable first. We want to declare the DB helper first. It is a variable under the my note data helper class. So we write private my note data helper. And then we write db helper. This will be the variable name. We fix that to uh, existing node. We haven't declared the cursor variable yet. So under uh, db helper, we want to type private cursor and existing node. We fix this error too. 
a simple cursor adapter, we need to in, uh, import the simple cursor adapter. You will see a straight line over the simple cursor adapter. This means the simple cursor adapter class is replaced by some new advanced class. But we can still use the simple cursor adapter. So you can ignore the straight line over the simple cursor adapter here. We haven't declared the variable SCA yet. It will be a simple cursor adapter variable. So we want to declare it first. On the cursor, we type in private simple cursor adapter. And we named the variable SCA. We fix that too. Next, we want to fix the uh, errors in the set on key listeners. We need to import the view class. We want to import the key event class. Now we fix the errors in the set on key listener class as well. For the optional uh, on item click listener, we need to fix the error too. We need to import the adapter view, and then we need to import the on item long click listener method. Now we get all errors fixed up. Let's test our app. Let's run it and see how it works. This is our final app. It looks good. I hope it works well too. Let's type in some uh, information to test this app. Dinner tonight. It works. Meet new students. The new notes showed up too. I have another function in the application. I want the user to press each note for a long time, then the note will disappear from the list. Let's try it out too. It works. It works too. Now we get a fully functional MyNote Plus app. See, it's not very difficult, right? If you are interested, you can continue working on uh, the MyNote Plus app based on what we have now. If you sell your app for 1 million copies in the future, don't forget to come back to commerce and buy me a good lunch. I believe this is new information to some classmates. You need some time to digest all the information from this lecture. I suggest you to review the slides in the PowerPoint. Remember the formats for the major class, for the cursor class, for the content values class, for the simple cursor class. When you get, get familiar with the standard format, and when you want to develop your own app, you can apply the standard format into your app. This concludes today's lecture. I will see you soon in the next one.